this shows to us that anybody who kills uh, shall surely be killed. Anybody who kills shall surely be killed. And not that. Now imagine, let us put it into our reasoning too. It was Jesus who died. I mean, it was Adam who has committed the sin. And he sinned against God. Why would Jesus have to come to die for the sins he knows nothing about? Why would? He doesn't know anything. About, he was not there when Adam committed the sin. So are you telling, is the Christians over there telling us that it is difficult for God to forgive, to forgive Adam? So if it is difficult for God to forgive that Adam, then we're in trouble. So how will it be that Jesus, that knows nothing about the sins of Adam, will now be persecuted for, because of the sin of Adam? Uh, the, 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 this is very uncommonsensical. This is unconceivable. It's, it, it's an obligation of mental faculty. It trials against common senses to say that uh, God in his infinite mercy do not have the power to forgive the sins committed by Adam except that somebody who knows nothing about it will have to come for the sin. Now, uh, the, 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 the question is, what will bring about remission of sin? It is repentance that will bring about the remission of sin. When one repents, that is when the sins shall be forgiven. And that is why in the Bible, despite that they plotted to kill Jesus Christ, he escaped. And that is why he was saying in the book of Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7, that Jesus, in the days of his flesh, who has cried unto God, who can save him from death? And the prayers were answered. Jesus prayed that God should save him from his sins. And the sins, I mean the prayers were answered. Why will the Christians of nowadays continue shouting that the sins were not forgiven? That until when Jesus comes, then he will be the one. To, in fact, there was a particular time that Jesus ran away. Jesus ran away because he was not willing to die. He was not willing to die. He ran away. Allow Akbar. And after some times, he came back that this is a jihad. We have to fight it. In John chapter 7, verse 19. He, 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 I mean, he, 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 was, he ran away that he, he could not bear what these people are trying to say. After that, in John chapter 7, verse 19, he was now preaching to his people. He started preaching. As Moses not giving you the law, now you are seeking to kill me. What was the law? In Exodus chapter 20, verse 13. Don't forget that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 and 18, I have not come to destroy the law of the prophets, but to fulfill them. So it is inside exactly the law of Moses that thou shalt not kill. In John chapter 5, verse 39, after using Moses, he now used Abraham to preach to them. That uh, are you children of Abraham? And they answered, we do. We are children of Abraham. If truly you are children of Abraham, then you should act accordingly. You should act like Abraham. Now you are seeking to kill me, the man who tells you the truth. Abraham is not an ayah killer. Abraham is not a killer. Abraham do not engage in, uh, he doesn't engage in uh, unnecessary killing. It doesn't kill anyone. So where have you seen yours? Where have you seen your theory that you intend applying? Can you see? After doing that, then Jesus thought that this is a time that you are going to wage war against these people. And he asked them in the book of Luke chapter 22, verse 36 to 38, that they should go and look for sword. They should do what? They should go and look for sword. And the Christians of nowadays... They believed and they do say that it is only the Muslims who are aggressive. The Muslims, they, they create problems. How about in the Bible? There are a lot of problems and problems in the Bible. In fact, the Bible got to the stage that it was giving us the attribute of a sword. But we're not going there. Jesus told them to search for sword when, because they were preparing to wage war against those who are waging war against Jesus. And he said, whosoever uh, has a sword, or who do not have, whosoever, don't, who, whosoever does not have a sword should sell his cloth to possess one. 
imagine. And a Christian told me, you see, you these Muslims, you fail to understand the Bible. That the sword Jesus was speaking about there is talking about the Bible. Because the Bible is the word, I mean, is the sword of a Christian. Then I said, okay, let me answer you intellectually. If the Bible is the sword of the Christians, which Bible was Jesus talking about? talking about then was he talking about king james or was he talking about reverse standard version was he talking about international version was he talking about new world translation and he was looking at me when the bible was not even written when jesus was alive jesus has never heard that word bible can you imagine and in the verse 38 in luke chapter 22 verse 38 and they said they were able to procure two swords so do we say two bibles whether King James and Queen James version of the Bible. Imagine. I don't know. So, after doing this, he has protected himself spiritually. I mean, uh, physically. Then Jesus went uh, uh, up there to protect himself physically, which we call physical, I mean, uh, spiritual protection. In Luke chapter 22, verse 41 and 44. And so the Bible says, And he withdrew about the stone cast and knelt down and prayed. Saying, Father, thou art willing, remove this cup from me. You are long to violate me. I am not willing to die. This is not what I want. And after this, God told Jesus that you have been protected. We in John chapter 12, verse 38, say, Oh God, make your name glorified. Glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven in, in, in John chapter 12, verse 28. A voice came from heaven saying, I have glorified my name and I will glorify it again. Allah Akbar. And I have been protecting, I have been glorifying my name. This time around, I will glorify my name also because they are willing to kill you and they will not be able to kill you. And you see, it's very funny. It is very funny when you see uh, a Christian telling you that, ah, in fact, Jesus Christ, without him, all of us will still remain in our sin. But the Bible made us understand that Jesus was not killed. Now, how do we know this? There are four ways by which Jesus was saved from uh, his sin. I mean, from, from the death. He was saved in four ways. I mean, the ways by which he was saved, there are four ways by which he was saved. But later, we will, we will put that forward. Now, who was killed? The question. Because I want to believe that so very many will now put forward this question. Okay, if you are saying that Jesus was not the one that was killed, who was the person that was killed? Now listen to this. In the book of Gospel of Barnabas, who gave the clear evidence that Jesus was not killed? Uh, in the book of Gospel of Barnabas, chapter 215, page 216, said, When the soldiers with Judas drew near to the, to the place where Jesus was, Jesus had the approach of many people. Therefore, in fear, he withdrew into the house. And the level we are sleep were sleeping. Then God, seeing the danger of his servant, commanded Gabriel, Michael, Raphael, and Uriel, his ministers, to take out to take Jesus out of the world. The holy angels came and took Jesus out by the window that looked towards the south. They were they they bear him they bear him and place him in the third heaven in the company of angels, blessing God forevermore. Allah Akbar. You can see. In the Isra al Miraj of Islam, when the Prophet Allah Islam got to the third day, he said, I saw my brother and prophet Isa alayhi salatu was salam in the midst of the angels. Allah. Look at what the Bible says, the, the, the Gospel of Manabah said, who reported this. Because they failed to take the documents of uh, Barnabas, only that of Paul was written. Then he, he went to write his own account. If you look at the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. They were all they were all writing their own account according to 
how the eyewitnesses and the ministers of the world delivered these messages unto them because they were not there. In Mark chapter 14, verse 50, the Bible says, they all forsook Jesus Christ and fled away. Can you see? So now, this is to tell us that Asa was, not, was neither killed nor was he crucified. Uh, in Corinthians chapter 4, verse 157 to 158, Allah says, we are calling him in Nakotalna Isa Abu Maria Rasulullah. And they say boastfully that Jesus has been killed. In Nakotalna Isa Abu Maria Rasulullah. That Jesus Christ has been killed. Wama Kotaluhu, he was neither killed, Wama Salabuhu, nor crucified. Wala King Shub Bihalao. But the likeness of it was shown to them. Wain and Ladina Ktalavu Vihi Lafisha Kimini. And those who wrote the account of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, they were in doubt. They don't have a certain knowledge except conjecture. But they killed him not. But Rafa Allah Ilehi and I raised it, raised him to himself. Wakana Allah Aziz and Akima. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Aziz and the most powerful Hakima and the most wise. My brothers and sisters, you can see from the Bible that Jesus Christ was neither killed. No crucified. Inshallah ta'ala, in our next uh, lecture, I shall introduce to you, I shall say unto you, I shall prove to you 40 evidences to prove that Christ was not crucified. The 40 evidences to prove. And even if we cannot, we cannot read the whole book. If you can't read the whole book, at least we will read the last 10 of it, which contains uh, the contradictions, the biblical contradictions or the scriptural contradictions of uh, Jesus Christ. I want to quickly remind, I mean, uh, welcome my brothers and sisters to this holy month of Ramadan. Ramadan, the month of blessings. Ramadan, the month uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us as a mercy. For the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was reported to have said that Mansoama uh, Ramadan Imana wa Ihtisaba Anybody who fasts in the month of Ramadan, Imana, with faith, and is hoping that he will get a reward from Allah. Allah forgives him his past sins. Can you see? Only in, in Islam, this, to fast in the month of Ramadan. Now, look at my Christian fellow too. Uh, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 2, the Bible says Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and he was hungry. So imagine Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights without eating anything and he was hungry. In Islam, Allah says, La, you can live for Lord who never son, illa who say, ah. We have not placed on human being or mankind what he, what he cannot bear, the body he cannot bear. So, ours is to hit Zahur in the morning and to break in the night. And the Christian will come to us to tell us, uh, Let them try it too. Try it to wake up in the morning as we do wake up and make the fasting. And you see how easy it is. This is the commandment from Allah. It is possible, truly, that you may not eat from morning till night. But when you have the intention of doing something, it comes to you like that. It is a blessed, a, a blessed uh, fasting. But ask the Christians. I have quoted from the Bible now that Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights without eating anything. But my br Christian brothers, they will fast when they, are, when they start their length. When they eat around 6 p.m., or, or not until another 6 p.m. in the next day before they ask them, where do they have that in the Bible? Where have Jesus commanded them to do that? And that is not as, as if that is not enough. Look at the issue of, uh, what is it called? The issue of white fasting. They eat white uh, rice. They eat white yam. They eat white meat. They eat or they drink white tea, they take white bread, they take everything white. 
<laughs> and they still claim they are fasting. At that point, be one lady. If below one no be belly. If it is just near my bar where sister sis. If it is just near my bar where I wear I wear fun fun. Eh, your motif fun fun. Your jab ready fun fun. Your jenny fun fun. Allah Akbar. Allah Mashi wa Allah. Now, in the Bible, in the book of Jeremiah 36 verse 9. And it came to pass in the fifth year of Joachim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, in the ninth month that they proclaim a fast before the Lord to all people in Jerusalem. Allahu Akbar. Jeremiah chapter 36 verse 9. Go and check it. The Bible says they proclaim the, uh, the fasting in the ninth month. Month. Oshukesan. When are you Christians fasting? When do you fast? Do you fast according to the Bible? Even when you fast, show us in the Bible where the Bible teaches you how to fast. Or where it has given you uh, uh, things to do when you are fasting. Or how do you fast? Is this cystosis or, 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 or white fasting? So you mock we Muslims that we have evidences based on what we do. Imagine. Once again, I want to welcome the Muslims. Inshallah, to the month of Ramadan. We pray that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use this Ramadan uh, uh, as a means of taking away our sins. And may He Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let it be possible for us uh, to fast as many years as possible. Uh, may He make us live longer than this. And finally, inshallah, in our next lecture, we shall establish the fact that Christ was not really crucified. He was not crucified. Another person was crucified and not Christ. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadun la ilaha ila anta astabuka atubu ilayhi. Subhanu rabbika. Rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wassalamun alayhi wa sallim. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.